Good morning. Happy Monday. Um, what a marvelous time to launch a new intercession assignment in October. It's, we're having a beautiful Indian summer here in Washington, and I absolutely love it. Um, I just wanted to go live today real quick. We are starting a new intercession assignment this month, and we are... Um, going after the enemy and his um, tactics of going after our children's identity. There have been a lot of assaults, a lot of news media, a lot of um, rhetoric around this um, <sighs> accepting and even a putting our stamp of approval of where the enemy is attacking our children's identity. And I just want to give a little bit of background on why I'm coming at this. And I also want to um, be gracious and walk in, um, in truth and grace. This is not going to be an easy topic to navigate during the seasons and times that we're living in, especially because we know people who've already been assaulted by this identity crisis and have leaned into a lie. But we also know that there are people fighting it still and those who are living in a state of confusion um, because their minds and heart and spirit have been um, directly attacked by the enemy. And so here's the thing that I want to just do a little bit of um, a background with me. When I was younger, there's my peanut. Hey. Say good morning. When I was younger, the enemy really, really, um, really assaulted me Please. in self-hate. And one of the things I hated about myself was being a girl. It, yeah, that's right. Being a girl seemed to bring trouble onto my life. Green. Now, there were certain moments in green, my life green, that, green. Um, green, 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 that I was a victim. And being green, a girl green, became green, this green, moment green, that I just green, dreaded green. and hated. And I saw, I saw that girls were treated differently. Girls were, um, and I'm not, I don't want to hop on the bandwagon of, of certain topics. What I want to say is I would have been an easy target for today's um, verbiage. I didn't want to be a girl. I did not have same-sex attraction. It's yellow. Thank you. But I did have a self-hate of who I was. And the enemy could have easily went after me in a I'm sense a of, go get it, go get it. <laughs> it's going to be fun today, guys. Um, she loves honey. Give me one second. We can't have, the, you can't drink straight honey, darling. Where's your, where's your drink? Um, anyways. Oh, we're having a moment. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, I know. Come here. Come here, darling. Come here. I would have been an easy... Thanks for holding in with me, girls. I'm going to... Um, I'm really going to press through because I know that the Lord wants me on this today. And so, Jesus, we just thank you that you're giving Evie a sense of calmness and peace now, Lord, as we go after um, dragons right here in our arena, Lord Jesus, that we have nothing to fear when we are walking in authority and in... Uh, an assignment that you've commissioned us to, Lord Jesus, that we can even walk into these storms with our children. So thank you, God, that you are just giving us um, peace in our home and in little Evie's heart. All right. I would have been an easy target for today's message that to just choose your gender. It's up to you. And I will tell you something. It would, it may have been something that enticed me because of how much I hated who I was. You do. Yay. I would have been an easy, easy target. First it was self-hate and then it became with this, this, um, hating who I was. And if, I don't know if I would have been offered the, the chance to just remove my identity. I might have. But I would have missed out on one of the most amazing things in my life. And that was the moment my heart woke up to being a mother. The moment that my life, all of a sudden, this, this light bulb, this switch that came on that was never there before. I had no desire to be a mother, no desire to be married. I find myself married young and having children pregnant at 18, having, having my first at 19. 
And I will tell you that I was like the Grinch, but in the motherhood side where my heart grew three sizes. I never knew that kind of love dwelled and lived inside of me until I became a mother. And my heart grieves for these young people who are being annihilated and their identities being stripped from them on this God-given gender, stamped on them from conception. And they are being robbed of a future hope and a future um, mission because the enemy is going after them now because of who they will be later. And if he can destroy them at this moment, he can rob them of that. And so one of the things that I really just want to um, focus on is going after a spirit of confusion in this assignment. I'm, it's my Bible. Can you say Bible? Bible. Thank you. And so here's the scripture I want to lean into right now. If It comes from Ephesians 2.10. I'm going to read it in the NIV, but the, I want you guys to write this down, put it in the chat. Our, the scriptures that we are proclaiming over our children. I have three scriptures that we are going to be proclaiming over our kids this week. Write them down. I want you to print them up, put them on the fridge, put them on the mirror. These are what we're going after to slay the dragon of confusion that is assaulting our children's minds and heart. If you have young people in your life, maybe you're not a parent, maybe you are a mentor. If God has assigned you, he's authorized you to begin to war and contend for them. And so here's our scriptures that we are going to use as our sword. We're going to take our faith and it's going to be the muscle behind that sword. So Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Workmanship. That we were created in advance. So you got to look back at that scripture where it says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. In advance, there was a stamp, a workmanship created for something in the future. And that's why the enemy is so hell-bent on destroying our young people's identity and going after them with this question of who I am. Because they began with, this is who you are. And the enemy has been assaulting that from the get-go. The same way he came after Eve. Did God really say, am I really this? I know, baby. Can you wait a minute? Pray for Evie. She wants a honey bottle. And so she likes a little honey water because right now we're finding out she has a milk allergy. So anyways. So as we go after this, I want you to think of young people. First, we're going to put a shield around our children that are in this environment with this scripture. We're going to pray a shield. We're going to put a fire. A, we're going to pray circles around them with our authority. Second, we're going to pray for those who have been already assaulted by this lie. And we're going to ask for a detangling. So we are going to pray not only for the Lord to guard our children, and our grandchildren and those in our lives against it. We are also going to pray that the that the lie that has that has taken root or tangled or is in the process of enticing the people that we know. We are going to begin to sever that. So just imagine a a, a fire of a sword on fire slicing these ropes. Come here, darling. I'm right here. So here's our next scripture. Let's take our next scripture where it says. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Write it down. Put it in the chat. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, and is in all the churches of the saints. Remember, right now, there are so many kids and young people fighting. Sorry, I'm grabbing my little one. Ooh, this is just kingdom work, guys, in front of our little ones. I know. Let me get her, can I? Where'd you put it? I really appreciate you all being patient. Right now, where we're living at, <laughs> this is just good fun. Thank you. Yeah, that's funny, huh? We are, we are, all right, let me gather myself again. So, God is not an author of confusion, but see, there's so many young people fighting anxiety that they're craving peace, that they'll do anything to quiet the sil and silence anxiety. 
and that we're medicating them. We are giving them um, prescriptions to give them calm the anxiety, but you know what it's not doing? This is not giving them peace. It's, it is numbing an anxiousness and a confusion, a heartache. But the only thing that we can give our children to insert and download peace is Jesus. He is peace. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And so we are going to pray peace over our children, peace over their mind, over their hearts. We are going to rebuke and bind anxiety because anxiety can, I get it, we, there are anxiety disorders and I, I myself have anxiety, but I know that I can draw from heaven and grab that prescription to pull into my heart immediately and I'm downloaded and comforted with his peace immediately. The next verse that we're gonna declare over our children and we're going to slay some dragons with is 2 Corinthians 4, four through six. Put it in the chat, write it down because here's our next one. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact lightness, likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. And <clears throat> we ourselves are your servants to Je for Jesus' sake. Oh, hold Foxy. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made the light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. These are beautiful scriptures that might not feel like a um, big, they might just feel little, but I will tell you, they are giant swords. And so as we come against a spirit of anxiety and we begin to release peace, we come against the spirit of confusion and we begin to release identity and God's design, his intelligent design. We're also going to come against Satan and the God of this world who is enticing our children to believe a lie. And instead, we're going to speak light into the darkness. So let's, um, let's just armor up, ladies. This is going to be a week of declaring these scriptures over our children. I want you to put their names in front of your mind. I want you to, uh, if you can, and you don't want to um, hurt feelings, put them out on where you're getting ready in the morning, maybe where you, on your fridge, anywhere where you can see these scriptures and see the names of those you are quoting the scripture over. This is weaponry at its finest. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we come against the enemy is taking the word of God and throwing it like stones at Satan's assaults. And so we are standing between our children right now and hell itself. And it is time that we stop being passive with this. Now, I want us to be grace filled if there is anyone in our lives that is walking in this um, identity crisis and that they are convinced. And I'm going to tell you, it is a really hard thing not to lean in with compassion and sympathy um, and come in agreement. But the thing is, is we can lean in with compassion and, and have a heart of understanding without agreeing. And instead, we can love them into the truth. And we can love them all the way. However long the battle is for them, we will get them into the throne room. We will get them into the throne room. You have to put that in your mouth now. Put that faith-filled proclamation. They will walk in their true identity in Jesus' name. Say their name out loud. If it's in the car, there's a song that I'll have um, maybe Sydney put in the chat that we've been playing over and over on repeat and it's called the throne room song and it's not the Kim Walker one it is a powerhouse song and so um Sydney if you're on if you could put that in the chat that'd be great so let's just go before the Lord if there are particular young people that you want us to pray for and partner with we are going to do that together put their names in the chat private message them to us we are going to pray for them and so let's just go before the Lord now and just see what he has for us and our young people. And I'm going to just pray over you to be fearless with your assignment over your family. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, that you have placed us in such a time as this, that we are standing as Esthers to prevent the annihilation of a generation. Lord, that you have assigned us with a queenly authority, 
you have assigned us with a royal stamp that says we can hold our hand up and say no more. You shall not pass. We stand between hell and our children now, God, and we take the authority that you've given us and we, we say the enemy cannot have our children that we plead the blood of Jesus over them now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, that you have drawn a circle. <laughs> we draw a circle around our children now, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that there will not be an assault on their mind. We come against a spirit of confusion now, a spirit that comes against them, making them question who they are. We come against those words, who am I? What am I? Am I a he or a she? I don't know who I am. We come against that confusion now in Jesus' name. We come against a spirit of darkness that is trying to infiltrate their hearts. Lord, that they were, they were designed and given an advanced purpose at conception. And so, Father, we come into agreement with their design, who you called them to be, their, their assignment in the future. And we rebuke every assault that the enemy is coming against their purity, against their minds, against the, um, even a spirit of a pornography that is coming against them. I see young people, not only are they being assaulted by pornography, but they're being assaulted by same sex pornography and they are being enticed. So we draw a bloodline now in Jesus name. We put a stop to to this in Jesus name and father instead every anxious thought that is coming against them and causing them to have turmoil we rebuke it with the spirit of peace and a spirit of love now in Jesus name perfect love cast out all fear we thank you God that love is what quenches and quenches and crushes fear we thank you God that your perfect peace comes and puts out the fire of anxiety and Lord, right now, we just pray for our children that are our grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbors that are in entangled in this lie. Father, we ask that you show us how to love them where they're at. We ask, Father God, that you give us words of truth, words of um, hope now in Jesus' name, that we can come and love them where they're at, bring kindness into their situation, show them that we will not reject them. That we will not shame them, but we will pray them into the kingdom. We will lead them, we will love them, and we will magnify you, Lord, in their lives, showing them that you are a light in this darkness. Father, I thank you for each mother, each daughter, each sister, each grandmother, each auntie, each mentor, each, each neighborhood leader, Father, that you have assigned Lord, we take our scepter seriously. We take our assignment seriously. And we know that there is no weapon. No weapon will prosper. Father, you have given us the strength and authority to stand. And stand therefore. And so, Lord Jesus, we continue to just lift up our children. We thank you, God, that we are going to see those who are entangled set free. And we thank you, God, we're going to see those who have been... Um, those who are in this mess, Lord, we thank you for a shield about them. Lord Jesus, that our children are in this world, but they are not of this world. And I thank you, God, that we will not shrink back in our influence, God, but we will go and say charge into darkness, Father, with the light that you have assigned us to infiltrate this dark world. I bless my sisters today, and I ask, Father God, that they feel a holy boldness infuse them. I pray that they feel it from their toes to their head, Lord, and it comes flooding out of their mouth in this bold, courageous move that they are making. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, sisters, you're going to take these scriptures that, that we are um, proclaiming. You're going to... You're going to quote them over your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, your nieces and nephews. If God has called you to it, he's authorized you to fight it. Do not be afraid. Do not shrink back in this. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. You're going to declare Ephesians 2, 10. And you're going to declare 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6. Let me read Ephesians 2, 10 to close in, in the Passion. We have become his poetry a recreated people 
that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. Oh, that's good. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we would do to fulfill it. Amen. We are going to pray that over our children. And if those who have, have um, leaned into the lie, we're going to declare that they are being recreated because we are born again. That means we can step into a new identity, the true identity, and undo the false ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Mwah. Love you, girls. Bye.